and welcome to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn. And today we're going to be doing this messy heat emboss technique using glitter embossing powder. Kind of stumbled upon this on accident, but I'll get more into that in just a minute. But first I wanted to go over some of these glitters because they are gorgeous. Now, this is not sponsored. I've purchased all of these on my own over several years. They were glittery and sparkly. They caught my eye, put them in my basket, and um, decorated my shelves with them. <laughs> Up until now, that is. These have a base embossing color, and then they have glitter mixed into them. So as the embossing powder melts, it traps that glitter into the design, and you have much less mess than you would have with loose glitter. Now, you're still going to have some fallout and some mess because it there is loose glitter in the powder, but nowhere near as much as if you were working with just straight loose glitter. They have a bunch of different varieties. Some of the base embossing powder is clear, some of it's colored, some of the glitter is very fine, and some of it's more chunky. By far, my favorite is the Wow Midas Touch. And judging from Instagram, you guys love this one too. It has fine and coarse glitter particles in it, silver and gold embossing powder, and hollow flakes. Hollow in this one, guys. Oh my goodness. It is gorgeous. I want to Midas Touch all the things, but you cannot start with Midas Touch. You have to work up to Midas Touch. So I'm gonna have more on that one here in just a little bit. We're gonna start with the card that kind of set me on the journey of using all of the embossing glitter powders. Um, this was a booboo card. I posted it on Instagram. You guys were like, how did you do it? That set me on the reverse engineering of how to recreate it without including all of the mess ups. So this card starts with a spotlight blending technique. And I'm pretty sure that this was inspired by my friend Yana. If you don't know Yana, I will have her linked here in the upper right hand corner. You need to know her, you're welcome. So spotlight blending. Basically you are going to create a halo or a spotlight of color that is darker on the edges and progressively gets brighter to the middle. I like to start with colored cardstock because it just saves time. This is a lot of blending and mama needs a workout, but mama doesn't always want to work out. <laughs> So I choose my first color is going to be the color closest to my cardstock. Then I'm going to choose one slightly darker, and then I'm going to choose the darkest color. In this case, I am using Broken China, Faded Jeans, and Black Soot. I prefer to use Distress Inks, but feel free to try it with your other inks as well. These just blend the easiest for me. I start off with my lightest color and blend it from the outside toward the edge, stopping just short of covering the whole cardstock. I want that center to stay the original color. Then I'm gonna move on to the slightly darker color. And again, I'm gonna blend from the outside edges in, but I'm not gonna take it in as far as I did with the first one. Then I'm gonna go back to my lightest color and I'm going to, again, go over all of that just to blend those two colors together. Then I'm gonna go back to the medium and then I'm gonna to go to the dark. The dark, I'm going to take in the least amount. Then I'm gonna go back to the medium and blend that dark in. And then I'm gonna go back to the light and do one layer over all of it to create that seamless blend. I'll do this as many times as necessary till I achieve the depth that I want. It's much easier to do it several times than to try to go in too dark because it's gonna be too hard to blend. So light to medium to light to medium to dark to medium back to light. Now it's gonna look splotchy at first, but that's because the core of the paper is still damp. Once this completely dries, it's a beautiful smooth blend which makes it the perfect starting point for many cards. However, if yours isn't that smooth this go round, don't worry about it. We're gonna cover it with messy embossing powder anyway, and it's never you're never gonna notice if it's completely smooth or not. So be easy on yourself. Now with my prototype card, this is where things started to kind of go off the rails. My idea was I wanna add foiled splatters to the background. And Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive is perfect for adding foil accents. It never fully dries back. In its dried state, it is repositionable, so it, it stays tacky, which normally drives me nuts. However, it's perfect for transferring decofoil. In order to do a splatter effect, I need it to be thin. It's liquid adhesive, but it's not watery. So I'm gonna water it down with a little bit of water. I don't have exact ratios here. What I did was just slowly added water until I got it to a consistency that I could easily flick off of the end of the paintbrush. Make sure you're using an old paintbrush. This is just an old stiff one that if it gets ruined, I don't care, I'll toss it and grab another one. Make sure you do this over a shallow box. First time I did it, I didn't use a box. Yes, I am still cleaning up tiny little flecks of Tombow Mono. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> use a box. 
I'm running my finger over the tip of that brush and causing these little tiny speckles of glue to be laid down. Lay the foil over the top, burnish it in, and when I pull that foil back, I now have these great foiled, you know, splattered, speckled background. It's gorgeous. Okay, gorgeous, but no matter how many times I put this foil down and took it off, put it down, took it off, it was not accepting any more foil, and it looked like it was fine, it wasn't. I don't know if some of those particles, those, some of that mist was just so fine, or it just, it left a sticky film over the entire card. I thought, no problem, I'll rub it down with an embossing buddy bag, get rid of all that sticky, be good to go. No, the powder just sticks to the glue, and then it was just this dull powdery mess. You can see here, even this one still has a little bit of a stick, but we're gonna use that to our advantage, because what I decided to do with the original card was I'm gonna add the sparkle back in by using some glitter embossing powder. So for this one, we're gonna skip the embossing buddy bag right now. We're not gonna go through that debacle again. Instead, I'm going to go straight into the heat embossing and I'm experimenting. I want to see what I'm going to get, how much excess embossing powder is going to stick to that glue that's currently on the cardstock. So I went ahead and covered that, knocked off any excess, and then heat set it. And it was actually giving me a beautiful frosted effect. It was kind of messy and frosted looking, but I could still see the definitive snowflakes coming through. And I was like, this looks really gorgeous. Let me just treat the edges very lightly with that embossing buddy bag and see what I get, see if I can get an even more definitive snowflake. And it seemed to be working. I was getting a more dispersed speckle there as you got towards the center. It's heavier on the edge and then kind of disperses out. And it's really creating this great frosted edge effect. And I really liked that. So I decided, all right, let's try just a little bit more. Because remember on the first card, I just, I mean, I went in guns blazing and just completely rubbed that whole sheet down with that embossing buddy bag. And it was, it was not a good look guys. So here I'm just being a little more ginger with that uh, embossing buddy bag. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this. And this time when I sprinkled on the embossing powder, it gave me almost a too clean, almost too clean of an impression. But I still had some speckle and I thought that it actually looked good. I had some variation in some heavier frosted areas and some more clear snowflakes. So I continued around the rest of the edge of the card. And on some of them, I didn't use any embossing bag. And then on some, I used a little bit more and that gave me a gorgeous, frame of frosted snowflakes and I actually really like how this turned out. All of the stick is now gone and it's just beautiful. Look at look at that shimmer. I, I can't get enough of it and I certainly don't want to cover it up. So I decided to go with a super simple triple stacked sentiment. I'm cutting down navy cardstock into quarter inch strips and I've already mounted the Warm Winter Wishes sentiment from our Merriest Snowflake stamp set into my Mini Misty. This is going to make stamping all three of them in the exact same spot super easy. Because these are going to be stacked one on top of the other, it's kind of important if they're off it will be very noticeable. I didn't want to use the glittered embossing powder for these because they are small sentiment and I was afraid that it would mess with the legibility. So I used the Hero Arts Liquid Platinum Embossing Powder and it happened to match that platinum sparkle from WOW perfectly. I trimmed each of my sentiments down to the same length using my tonic trimmer and then prepped them with some 3M foam tape so they'd be ready to adhere to the front of the card. But I also wanted to include a variation. My original card, I used the navy blue sentiments, but I wanted to see how it would look if I used the blue, the original blue cardstock that I had started with. And looking at it here, this is a great option. I actually really like it too, but I am a fan of contrast and I just knew that I was gonna mount this on navy blue cardstock. So I went with the original navy blue. Kinda, I kinda wish I would've went with a light blue and then I would've had the two versions, but it is what it is now. I finished it off with a thread nest of DMC metallic thread and added some clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. I love how this card turned out, but remember it was an oops card. It came about because of a series of mistakes and trying to correct those mistakes. 
So that got me thinking a little more intentional and trying to recreate something similar, but in a more controlled manner. So I'm going to show you how I created this card. This one does not involve any spotlight blending or foil and glue. This is just straight embossing powder. And not just any embossing powder, we're breaking out the Midas Touch. So just fair warning, get ready for it. We're going to use the same stamp set, the Merriest Snowflake. We're not going to prep this cardstock with an anti-static bag. Remember, we're going for that messy frosted look, so stray embossing powder is welcome. Now this embossing powder has larger chunks in it and it does have those hollow flakes. So I noticed that when I went to heat it with the heat gun, some of that was blowing off. And then I remembered a trick that you can heat the paper from the back side, and that helps to keep the particles from blowing away. So for this particular powder, I started by heating the back side, getting it started melting, and then came around to the front side and finished it off. Now, this actually gave me a pretty clean impression for not treating the paper beforehand. Go figure, any other time it'd be a hot mess. So now we have to intentionally make it more messy. I'm gonna sprinkle the embossing powder directly onto the card. I'm concentrating more on that inner edge to get more of a broken sprinkling toward the center of the card. Now remember, there's no Versamark or anything to hold this powder to the paper, so it's important that you start heating it from the back side. If you come straight to the front, you will blow away all of the embossing powder, but you can finish it off on the front side once you've started melting it from the back. So I liked the way this looked. It was a much softer, less messy, but I wanted more. So I decided to take the Versamark pad straight to the cardstock and hit those edges heavily. Now, if you already know going in that you want to do this very heavy edge frosted look, you could start straight with the Versamark pad to the paper. But I just wanted to show you how you could do a little bit or you could do a lot. And I'm still going to pour extra on top just to break up that edge. I didn't want a hard line across the edge. I wanted to make it look a little more organic. Now we do have the Versamark on the paper this time and it's holding that embossing powder in place. So we can just heat emboss as, as usual, just from the front side of the paper. You do wanna make sure not to hold the gun in one place too long because you will scorch the paper. So I'm just gonna continue all the way around to the card until I have all of the edges done. And this is quite a lot of heat embossing, but strangely, I did not get a lot of warping. Probably because the first go round I was heat embossing from the back side and then I came and heat embossed from the front and that kind of evened it out. But you can see here, it's pretty much flat. You can also see here that gorgeous shift from silver to gold. Oh, it is, in real life, it is unbelievable. We're gonna finish this one off again simply. Don't wanna take anything away from that gorgeous background. So we're using the Holly Jolly Christmas stamp set. And I'm stamping these in our warm wool ink. I am gonna double stamp it, because I do wanna create a little bit of contrast, and double stamping it'll make it just a bit darker. I wanna keep the overall card very soft and very rustic, but it needed just that one extra layer. I'm gonna use my tonic trimmer again to trim these out. We're gonna do that triple stack sentiment, but this time it's gonna say Cozy Winter Wishes, and instead of hearing it directly to the card base, we're gonna ground it with a piece of vellum. So I'm adhering that to the vellum with some 3M foam tape. And then I decided that I wanted one more layer. And if you watched my last couple of videos, you guys know I have a paper crimper here. Did, yep. So we're gonna paper crimp that. And then I'm gonna use that same warm wool ink and we're gonna distress it. I'm just lightly rubbing the ink pad against the cardstock there and wherever it's raised, it's going to hit the ink pad and cause the ink to transfer. I'm going to adhere this to the center of the card and I'm going to use my grid mat below to help me make sure that this is perfectly centered. Since it's a rectangle within a rectangle, if it's even slightly off, it's going to be noticeable. So here you'll see that I'll count the squares on either side, making sure that it is centered vertically, and then I'll count the squares again and make sure that it's centered horizontally. I did end up trimming this down an eighth of an inch all the way around and adhered it to a top folding card base. I decided also I wanted to bring that glitter to the front in a small way. So I used some Nouveau glitter accents. I just squeezed some out, moved it around with the nozzle and then used my finger to flatten it out. Again, I wanted to complement the background but not compete with it. 
So that will finish up today's cards. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. This is the card that started it all. If I wouldn't have made that mistake with the foil and the glue, I probably would not have reached for my glitter embossing powder. So I'm actually extremely happy that that happened. I really like the results and I've already found some other ways to use my glitter embossing powders and I have some other videos coming up for you guys showing what else I've done with them. And if this is a little over the top for you, you might really enjoy those because it uses them in a more subtle, focal way. I also wanted to give a little shout out to this card. This was the other, the first one that I did with the Midas Touch and it just does not photograph or show on video the way it does in person. I really hate it when that happens and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. I think a combination of all the shine and not quite enough contrast just really keeps it from photographing well. And finally, the one we just created, I just cannot get over that shift there. Do you guys see how, oh. Anyways, I hope that I gave you guys some ideas on how to use those glitter embossing powders and I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Remember, I'll have all of the featured products listed in the description box below and you can find all of the W plus 9 supplies at wplus9.com as well as at many of your favorite retailers. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!